this one. So can you hear me? Okay. Okay, so our next speaker is Domenico Pistorenta from the University of Roma Scienza. Yes, Kirsten Abbott, brackets. <laughs> exactly. So it's a pleasure to be here, also strange in these difficult days, actually. But let's do math. So uh, uh, I'll continue on the theme of, of Kirsten Abbott algebras. So just that we have just seen in Matthew's talk, of course, not to make it too simple to follow, I'm using the other convention. So my Gersten Abbott brackets will have a cup product of the degree zero and uh, a Lie bracket of degree minus one. So sorry about this. Maybe knowing that we, we, we could agree, but too, too late for that. <laughs> okay, so let, let me revise the construction of the Gersten Abbott algebra structure on Oxyl cohomology. So we, we have seen this on a subcomplex, on the subcomplex of polydifferential operators, but let me revise the general construction. So let A be an associative algebra. By associative algebra, I always mean associative algebra with a unit. And out of this, we can construct a cochain complex, which is called the Oxygen cochain complex. So in degree n, we have just k multilinear maps from A to A, where k is the base field on which we are working. More generally, we can work on some <coughs> ring, but uh, for this world talk, k will just be a, a field. OK, so the differential is just the following. So I, I have a, an n multilinear map, and I want to make out of it an n plus 1 multilinear map. So uh, I have to give to defy n plus 1 elements. And I use the multiplication in A just to contract any pair. So I can contract each internal pair where two elements are one next to the other, like this. Or I can use the fact that A is also an A module. And so I can multiply the first one on the left and the last one, one on the right. So actually, I'm using the fact that A is an AA by module. And this will be used also later. OK, so this is a differential. D square is 0. It's almost immediate to check. So we have a cohomology. But then we have also two other operations. So uh, OK, so this is just a graphical notation that is useful. So I will depict. Uh, an element in the Oxyl complex as uh, a dot marked by the element with n inputs and one output, just as it was just here a few minutes ago. OK, and out of this, we can define the differential in this graphical way. So you see, we have used the multiplication, and we can either insert the multiplication on top of phi, and this can be done in two different ways this way and this way, or under phi. And this suggests that we can generalize this operation and define more complicated operations. So a cup product that uses two elements in the oxygen complex and the multiplication and builds up another uh, multilinear operator. And this is exactly the formula that we had before. What we did not have before was uh, an explicit formula for the Lie bracket. It, it was said that the Lie bracket was just a generalization of the commutator. And let me be a bit more explicit here. So we first define the operatic composition. So we insert psi under phi uh, in the i-th position. And then we can do this over all possible inputs. And so we get this expression here. And then we sum over all possible inputs. And this is the, yes, there's a, there's a question. So this uh, resembles a lot the, the fusion algebra notation by t So t take the ribbon uh, category, uh, what can I say, formalism. And mm -hmm. construct a fusion algebra for the Dreamfeld double models. 
Is this related because it looks very much the same? Well, the, the formula is, is essentially that. So here I'm not using, for instance, duals, so I will not have cap and caps. But th this part of the formula, yes, Thank you. Thank and, you and the notation is more read from the bottom to top, Perfect. which is typical in, in that kind of notation. And OK, then we have this uh, total operatic composition with sum over all inputs. And then we just take the commutator, the credit commutator, and this will give us a, a Lie bracket. And notice that in this notation, the Lie bracket has degree minus one, since one of the inputs it is eaten by joining the two things. OK, so as Mathieu recalled, these operations are compatible with the differential, so induce operation on the cohomology. So we have a cap product and a Lie bracket on the cohomology. And the actual cohomology with these two operations is a gerstein -Aber algebra. What is a gerstein -Aber algebra is just like a Poisson algebra, but with the Lie bracket, which has degree minus one. Or in the other convention, it's just like a Poisson algebra, but where the multiplication has degree plus one. OK, so what I want to present in uh, this talk is a generalization of this construction. After all, this workshop is about brackets. So <coughs> the generalization is the following one. So instead of taking just an associative algebra, we take an associative B algebroid. Uh, what, what is this? It, this is just so we have our associative algebra A. But then we also take an AA by module. And we ask that U is a ring object in AA by module. So AA by models are clearly a monoidal category. And we ask U to be a ring object there. And we ask it to be a co-ring object in, uh, in just in A models. So the co-multiplication just will respect the multiplication from A just on the left. And uh, I, I, these two structures, so we will have both a product and a coproduct on U, will have to be compatible in some way. I'm not giving details on this just because these details will not really need it for the construction. So the, the only reason I give this exact definition is that with this precise definition, I can give uh, you explicit formulas for the cap product and the bracket and a full proof of the statement. But as, uh, as you will see, the reason why the statement should be true, uh, it, it works in a much larger generality. Essentially, it works in any monoidal category with some good algebraic features. So this is just to be thought as a good example of a monoidal category with um, good features. Which monoidal category? The monoidal category of U models. OK, so let me construct. First, I want to construct a chain complex, which generalizes the Oxchild chain complex. And this is done this way. But of course, I have to say what x and z are. So we start with u, and we add two more ingredients. So we will need a commonoid uh, and a monoid in uh, the category of u models. And this will need to have a few good properties. So x will be a commonoid, so it will have a coproduct. And it will also need to be an element in the weak right center of the category of u models. This means that there is a natural transformation from multiplication with x on the right to multiplication with x on the left. We do not ask this to be an isomorphism. So this is the reason why this is called weak center. So we just ask that there is this transformation, which is natural. And of course, if my category were, say, symmetric monoidal, every object would be in the, in the center, and it would be in the strong center. Uh, here, I'm not assuming that the category is uh, symmetric monoidal, but still there will be some object that can be permuted. And objects that can be permuted are objects in the center. Uh, being permuted in the center means that this is an isomorphism. But here, I'm not requiring that. I'm requiring the arrow just in one direction. And so this is the weak center. And 
uh, I will also need X to be a commutative commonoid. So I mean that this interchange map from X times X to X times X is compatible with the coproduct. And of course, this is just the dual notion of a commutative monoid in the center, which is what I require Z to be. So my ingredients are U, U defines the monoidal category. And then in the monoidal category, I take a monoid and a commonoid in the centers. And then I require these two objects to be compatible, which is the compatibility. Well, X will have a morphism from Z times X. So I can multiply X on the right of, of Z and move it on the left. So I will have this morphism here. But also Z is in the center, and Z is in the left center. So I can first multiply Z on the left and then move it on the right. And I will have another morphism, the morphism for Z. And the compatibility will be requiring that these two morphisms from X times Z to Z times X are the same morphism. OK, so these are the ingredients. What can I cook up with these ingredients? So first, a complex. Well, the complex is just the same, in a sense, of as the Oakshield complex. So I take uh, a long tensor product of copies of U, and just I put a copy of X in the end and Z, and I just take multilinear maps from one to the other. And what is the differential? Just as before, I can multiply the elements that are one next to the other, and then I can use the fact that Z is a U module to, multi to have the external multiplication. So this differential is just the same as the actual differential. And now I want to define a cap product and a bracket. And well, these are less easy to be done. So this is the cap product, and this is the bracket. I'm writing them just to shock the audience. So the idea of the talk is why these formulas? So there are several, oh, of course, this generalized the, the previous construction, just taking as <coughs> okay, just taking as U the enveloping algebra of A. So just A tensor the opposite algebra and taking X and Z just to be A. And OK, so the main theorem is that these theorable operations will induce a Gestenhaber algebra structure on uh, the cohomology of that complex. So the questions that remain open are, how does one imagine these operations? And why these operations and not others? And more importantly, why all those assumptions on X and Z? So <clears throat> to answer these questions, we have to make a step back. So the step back is, let us think of the Oakshield cohomology. So after all, in Oakshield cohomology, it is simple to give the operations. So maybe one may not wonder why the Oakshield cohomology of an associative algebra has a Gerstenhaber structure. But let us try to answer this question. So why do we have an, a Gerstenhaber algebra structure on the Oakshield cohomology of A? So the first thing we look at is the complex. What is that complex? Well, if we look at A here as an object in the monoidal category of AA by modules, then taking A, A tensor A, A tensor A tensor A, and so on, well, this is the, just the bar resolution of A in the category of AA by modules. So what is the Oxfield complex? So by definition, at least by the naive definition I gave, it, it is just K linear morphism from N copies of A to A. But this is just the same thing as homomorphism of AA by modules from N plus one copies of A to A. And now these terms here are the terms in the bar resolution of A. So what we are computing is just homes in the category of AA by modules from 
a to a or better from a resolution of a to a so we are computing the x groups of a with coefficients in a in the monoidal category of aa by models so uh, this is what really the Hochschild cohomology of a with coefficients in a is it's the the total x group of a with coefficients in a in the category of aa by models but in this category a is just the unit element so the real thing we are saying is that the x group in some monodal category of the unit object with coefficients in itself carries a natural gaussian uh, structure and the question is why and an answer to this uh, has been found by Schwed in 98 so the idea is instead of using x groups x spaces we use x spaces so we build a simplicial complex or a topological space if you prefer whose homotopy groups are the x groups and then we work topologically in these spaces so uh, what are these x spaces they are introduced by reta in 86 so the idea is that an element in x n can be represented by an iterated n fold extension so to say extension you see that uh, we cannot just work in an arbitrary monodal category we need a notion of exit sequence and indeed the context in which this construction should work is that of exit categories so an exit category is like an abelian category but with something less so you just have a notion of exact sequence in it it's just like the correspondence that there is between derived categories and uh, triangulated categories so a just as a triangulated ca category is an axiomatization of a derived category an exact category is a sort of axiomatization of an abelian category so it's a context where you can speak of exact sequences without having kernels and co-kernels okay so the idea is that i build a category where uh, objects are these n-fold extensions and morphs well morphs are what you can imagine are just commutative diagrams of n-fold extension in which the two side morphs are the identities and then two simplices in this simplicial space will be homotopies of morphs and so on. So this gives you um, a simplicial set, which is actually an infinity groupoid. Uh, it, 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 it is not obvious from the definition in a sense, because uh, there is no invertibility there a priori. But just, just think what happens when you have just uh, um, a single extension. Then the fact that that morphism in the middle is an isomorphism is the five lemma and for longer extension this is not strictly true uh, you need to be able to take the eis to be projective and in that case what you have well both lines are resolutions so both lines have zero cohomology so the vertical morphism is automatically a quasi isomorphism and uh, if you work with projectives then a quasi isomorphism is automatically um, homotopy equivalence so this is another part of the part of nice monodal category that was in the title you, you need that uh, you need not only it to be exact but also to have enough projectives for this really to work but okay once you define these spaces the pi naught of the space of n fold extension is just x n and what is interesting is that also pi one as an interpretation as in every uh, x spaces category so you have that pi one is x n minus one so this paves the way to defining the cap product and the bracket at the level of spaces so at the level of space the cap product will take an n fold extension and an m fold extension and will produce an n plus m extension and the bracket the bracket will be more interesting from a topological point of view it will take an n fold extension an m fold extension 
and will produce not directly an element in uh, xn plus n minus one, but rather a loop into this space. So how do I produce these two operations? Well, now this is simple. The, the first operation is very simple. So you have the first extension, which is this one, the second extension, which is this one, you just join them, so this way, and you forget this part. So you just go from A0 to FP minus one. This is called the splicing. And this induces the cap product. Excuse me. While, uh, yes. So is this, so this is the Yoneda product. Right? Yes, this is Yoneda product, which is what induces the, the cap product or on X groups. Because I think yes, the, 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 uh, the statement about by not, I think that was also due to Yoneda originally, but it's the higher homotopy groups being the X of, of lower degree. That's the, 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 that I think is due to Reta. Sorry? Uh, well, the, the, the Yoneda's theory of, of X uh, 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 had this construction yes. in the 50s, like these long extensions. The, the fact that the pi naught it, it, it is the X. Yes. But I think uh, uh, what Retic did to. Yes. Like, yes. Right. So I think uh, 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 Retic saw that the, uh, 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 what, what you just told about the. the uh, oh, yes. Yeah, uh, you mean. Set whose higher homotopy groups are Oh, OK, OK. So, so I should have said, uh, yeah. when you see Yoneda's theory of X groups, and notice that yeah. X n minus 1 can be interpreted as upper right. 1. OK, mm -hmm. yes, sure, thanks. So, so for the bracket, I have to, to produce a loop. And the idea is that so these sharps are the joints. Then we, we can take the tensor product of these two extensions. Actually, it is the tensor product of E and F as augmented complex, but this is just a, a technical part I will gloss over. And then all this gives you a loop, and this loop represents the bracket. And how do you check that this operation gives you a Gestenabe algebra structure? Well, the <coughs> original proof by Schwede is just by making explicit both the cap product and the bracket, and noticing that this explicit operation are just the cap product and the bracket in the Oakshield cohomology. Uh, there is a general argument, uh, it can be traced back at least to Schoeke, that uh, abstract nonsense should give always uh, get an algebra structure. Actually, it is not clear even that the, the bracket you obtain this way is bilinear. So if you really want to, to prove that you have a get an algebra structure, you have to work a bit. In the case of AA by model, so in the case of classic oxygen cohomology, the first proof I'm aware of is only really recent. It's 2020 by Volkov and Winters Winterspoon. So when, when uh, with Nils Kowalski we wrote this paper, we were not aware of this paper. So we wrote it in a particular case, that of the um, uh, associative bialgebroid. And now we are trying to use this to, to make a, a general proof. And OK, so I, in the final two minutes, I have to tell you how we can generalize this construction. So the idea is we are to splice now two sequences that now does not have the end point of the first to be the same as the starting point of the second. So we cannot just splice them. And what we do, I tensor the first one with Z on the right. So here I will have X tensor Z. And the first, the second one with X on the left. So here I will have X tensor Z. And now I can splice this way. This still is not in the right space because I want to start with Z and I want to finish with X. And I'm starting with Z tensor Z and finishing with, with X tensor X. But here is where I use the fact that X is a commonoid and Z is a monoid. So I make a double change of base and I end up with the right starting and closing. And then I have to produce the loop. Well, the loop is a bit more complicated first because it is not so in the one one case it was easy here to have just a tensor product and this was talking to both of them here is a bit more difficult to produce something that talks 
both with the two splicing. Uh, it, it is this horrible total complex that we called Moloch since uh, it was uh, all inspiring. But, but it, it, it is just something that talks to both splicings. But we are not done yet because in the, well, if you go here, you, you see, you construct the, the roof and then you just switch the role of E and F and you get the bottom part and you are done. Here, if you just switch the role of E and F, you get this one. And this one does not exactly match with the top part. You see here, Z is on the left, while there Z is on the right. And here, uh, the same, and the same for X. So here is where you use the fact that Z is an element in the center, and also X is an element in the center. So using that, and the fact that they form a commuting pair, you can write these two maps, and then you have a loop. And just to conclude, let me show you where the assumption, yes, that's a question. So, yes, so, uh, where? Uh, here, yes, there's a missing hash mu and hash delta. There's a typo here, thanks. And here there's a missing hash delta, yes, thanks. So I, the, the top one is correct. And the bottom one should be the same, just with F and, the, uh, F and uh, E exchanged. Uh, yes, I, I, I forgot writing a, a couple of things. So let me show you where you use the fact that X and Z are a commuting pair. So using the fact that Z is in the center, you have that each time Z is on the left, you can move Z to the right. So the naturality of the transformation gives you the commutativity of all this part. And then you see the fact that X is in the center. You have the commutativity of this part. But then just here in the middle of the diagram, you have that you are using sigma on the left and tau on the right. And in order to have this part here to commute, so this commutes, this commutes, this commutes, but you still need this little part in the middle to commute. So once you have all this, uh, you have the loop and you are done. This defines a bracket. So just to conclude, how does one get the explicit formulas out of the abstract nonsense? Well, this is a nice story, but it's a nice story for coffee breaks. So thanks a lot for the attention.